some doubles. Get on back to answer some more goddamn questions. Questions we're going over today. Uh, on the fucking video three weeks ago, Jeffrey Dahmer was a good guy, question mark. 177 comments. And uh, what do I see here? Yeah, what the fucking lost my goddamn spot? Where the fuck's he at? Bunch of question marks. Uh, Life Eternal. Thoughts on Misery, Act Misery Index. Thought you might dig them considering their connection to early fetus stuff. You know what's funny about them is um, I remember when they first started, when it was Jason, when he left um, Dying Fetus. And when I heard from when he left Dying Fetus at the time from when I was kind of told, I was kind of told in person because the truth be told, what I was told, so Dying Fetus was playing in the early 2000s around a, a lot. And this is right around Destroy the Opposition. Um, that's when the, the light up totally changed. So in the early 2000s, I saw him quite a few times. And I wouldn't say like we're like best friends with the guys or anything. They, they wouldn't even fucking remember us at this point. But they saw us several times, me, Eric, and Chase at the show. So they're kind of, you know, we'd kind of hang out and talk a little bit. Keep in mind, they're, again, all these fucking guys like, like Dying Feet is now coming up. You know, there's going to be a bunch of fucking sideways half goddamn canoes walking around. It, it, there's like 50 people there. It's like, that's why when people compare them now, it's like, dude, I'm so sick of these fucking 19 year old, 20 year old kids coming in here. Like they're, like they're the ones calling the shots, the law, the laws of the scene, uh, you know, a, a, a figurehead of authority is sort of, sort of saying, it's like, dude, you, were, you weren't even alive, man, when the band was, quite frankly, to be completely honest with you, destroy the opposition and shit, even though it's now, what, 22, 23 years ago, that to me still thinks, even if you just get it, got in on that record, I got in right before that record. You're still kind of a newbie. That was their fourth goddamn release. That wasn't like, that's eh, an oldie. To me, that's a, that's a recent one. I mean, it's an oldie now, kind of, but even by my mind, I don't know, that was, that was a later one. Yeah, you know, the early ones was infatuation, malevolence, and um, purification through violence. Anyways, uh, the ones talked to the most was John, John Gallagher, and uh, Kevin. You know, it's funny. We even, uh, John gave us his personal email, and uh, to this day, the version I own, although I bought it when it first, first came out, um, the Destroy the Opposition, I bought Bought it initially from, uh, actually, I don't even know if we think when we were doing Hell's the Time, maybe we, we uh, wholesaled it or traded for it. Might have been around the time the Spawn of Saint was out, we traded, we lost for it, or like I said, we wholesaled it before before we even had our first release. And I got my copy through that. But nonetheless, I got Destroy the Opposition when it first came out through Really Ops. And I actually didn't keep that version. The reason being is because John gave us our email. We were talking to him, shooting the shit. And they, they were one of the bands, they did a Japanese bonus track one. And the, the bonus track on there, I think it's come out again as a bonus track or something, but it was the only way you had this song was called Reduced to Slavery. And it's a fantastic fucking song. So the album initially only has eight songs, but the bonus track version is nine songs. That's the one I got. We got them from John. When John got back home, took our email, hey guys, what's going on? He's like, he's like I might have a few extras. He was talking about, oh, definitely fucking one. He's like, they're expensive though. And I was like, oh, I know, because I was like, we, we bought a few Japanese before. Like, I, I, my, uh, my, my Cannibal Corpse Gallery of Suicide is the Japanese bonus track one, Bloodthirst is Japanese bonus track, and a few other CDs. So I knew that you're talking, this is, this is 99, 2000, 2001. Even then, the CDs were 30 to $40. But I was willing to pay, so I was like, I want the extra song. So John said, I might have a few left, and he did. He had three, and I'm, I'm almost positive we got three. One for me, Eric and Chase. I'm assuming they still have theirs. I still have mine, God damn it. Got that in, and uh, so kind of, you know, talked to John a little bit, so saw him at shows, and I remember seeing him again after that, said, oh, yeah, I got the CDs, thanks, and I think I had them, because mine signed, must have had them signed that, that, then at that show, and I think that would have been the one with Vader, the tour with Vader, probably, that, that's what it had been, I'm pretty sure, timeline's a little skewed. Anyways, I remember the last time they were playing for that tour, uh, it was kind of like a little bit of commotion in the background, talking behind each other's backs a little bit because everyone knew it was thrown in the air like, hey, the band's not breaking up, but members are leaving, etc. And it was Kevin Talley. I was talking to him for like easily 30 minutes. And uh, he was telling me that, uh, yeah, well, fucking uh, what, it, what it is, man. So what's happened is we're just trying to make good face right now, get the tour over with because we had shit signed. He's according to him. He said John was stealing money. Uh, for the band. Now, the thing is, is I don't know what their agreements were because technically it sounds weird. John's stealing money. I said, well, it's in my mind, it's John's band. 
was like, as long as he's just whatever your guys' agreement was, as long as you're getting paid per gig, let's say they got a thousand dollars a night. I have no idea. I'm just using some math. There's four guys in the band. If each guy's guaranteed two hundred dollars and the other fucking that's eight hundred dollars, another two hundred dollars goes to expenses, gas and whatever, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? And you got your two hundred dollars. I mean, what was he stealing from? How was he stealing? Now, I didn't get all those details, but that's what he said. And he's like, yeah, Jason's fucking definitely leaving. I'm leaving. And um, because, yeah, John was fucking stealing from the band. The band account, I think is what he said. Um, so when all this happened, I remember right after the tour, Dying Fetus was kind of announcing a new lineup shortly after. And Misery Index was uh, Misery Index is out. And I'm like, uh, well, no, maybe it was maybe Misery Index was a year or two because I thought Jason was locked the band. And he's, then I heard he kind of the excuse in interviews or whatever was saying, ah, couldn't tour. I'm going to be doing school, so I don't have time for a band. But then it was like another year or so, and Misery Index comes out, and I was kind of like, oh, wait, 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 why, why did you leave Fetus then when you used the excuse in the interviews? Had nothing to do with the fucking John stealing from him. That was just Kevin that said that, why he was leaving. Well, Jason, you left because you, you didn't have time to do music because you're going to school. But now you have another band. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Like, why, why would you do it? And I remember checking it out then. So this is, I don't know, 03, 04, 05, something around there. And uh, I remember thinking it was pretty decent, but I didn't buy it. I think it was just probably something that came into the distro, I guess. And uh, I think I was kind of like meaning to. And ever since then, I never rechecked anything out, but I kind of was meaning to. But uh, looking at it and stuff, I'm just kind of like, eh, it looks kind of like, like would it be my thing? Kind of judging a book by its cover, which I probably shouldn't. But in the back of my mind, I'm slightly kind of want to recheck out uh, Misery Index. Uh, but I know it's Jason. I'm assuming it's still Jason. Um, a little bit from what I understand, a little bit more grindcore, kind of like, I guess, uh, from what I recall and what it looks like, it just looks like kind of like Napalm Death, Scum, Terrorizer, World Downfall, uh, influenced, not saying it sounds like that, but influenced from that and going with that, uh, which is cool. I like those albums, but uh, I don't know. They're just a band that kind of stopped paying attention to, but I remember when they, yeah, they first goddamn started off. Oh, well, the band Jason went to go do, uh, when leaving Fetus cause goddamn John was ripping everybody off. So a little goddamn story time for you. Little in case you happen to give a fuck, that's what I was told. And I'll come over here and say anything fucking stupid if you're in that goddamn camp. That's just what the fuck I was told. I'm relaying a goddamn message, and it was 23 fucking years ago. So I don't know how true it was or not. Was Kevin blowing smoke something? Because I've heard little whispers in the background too, Kevin Talley, that that guy's a fucking jerk. He's hard to work with. Because I know he played like drums with Slayer, helping them out, a bunch of others, and I forget who did work with them. Somebody I know. But, oh, dude, that guy's a fucking rock star canoe. He was always nice to me. I don't know, but uh, that's what I've heard. So I can't say anything bad about him. I, def- I didn't have any problems with him. I've met him three, four, five times. I talked to him. Uh, he was always cordial and cool with me. Granted, I was just a kid. And a, uh, you know, what's funny, too, is looking back at it, when I first met him, I, I was, I think the very first time I met him, it was definitely before um, Destroy the Opposition was, not, Destroy the Opposition was out. I had him sign my 12-inch uh, grotesque impalement, 12-inch. And... Uh, so at that time, I was, it had been 99, 2000, probably, I think it was 2000. So I would have been 15 years old, right? Looking back at the time frame when I found out how old he was and when I look at my photo with him and shit, I look at it now, didn't think at the time, I was like, man, he's young as fuck. And I look at it, like, I think I looked it up one time, and I think he was 20 or 21 years old when I met him. I'm like, oh, he's only five or six years older than me. I'm thinking, not great, he didn't say anything. It's not his fault. It's completely my dumbo with your fucking dumb ass. I'm thinking, like, this guy's like, Maybe not 40, but 35, 38. I'm thinking he's like a grown, grown ass man. He's basically he's just a kid. Because to me, if you're 20 or 21, you're, you're still a kid in my book. Flat out a kid. You just got out of goddamn high school. You st- your your opinions on things in life will be much different at age 30 than they are now. So to me, yeah, you're, you're still a kid. So um, it's just funny because I'm thinking he's so much older than me. And, you know, kind of like, I'm not going to say I put him on a pedestal, but I really liked his drums. And, um, but yeah, it's just funny. He's, like, he's a little bit, he's a few years older than you. So, there's that guy. Yeah, but like I said, he's always cool to me, but I have heard that he's a fucking jerk. So, if he made that story up, and he's the lying-ass piece of shit canoe, possibility, I don't know. But they were all, all the guys were cool to me. John, Jason, Sparky, that was the lineup back then. They were all cool. I have a few different photos with them from back then. So, Super Vomit, question, J-Dog, what is your thoughts on the Worm Infested EP? Cannibal Corpse Worm Infested EP? I got the Digipack version. I remember when that first came out, too. Um, I remember there was a Digipack version of Jewel Case, and I specifically wanted the Digipack, so I, I held off for like a month to two months, so I was able to track down the Digipack, got the Digipack, um, it's great, I mean, talk to the, the songs that are on there, and then there's 
Did they put the uh, No Remorse cover on there again? It's just like five tracks of totality. Um, that's another thing. If I was in the band, I would do probably the title track, Worm Infested, um, live, because uh, that's kind of like a, um, it's not an obscure song, but to me, it's like the diehards will know it, and the fucking poser ass canoes that, that that have no business being there, which is pretty much eighty percent of the crowd, in my opinion. We've already established that. If goddamn any of the big bands, Slayer. DSI, Cannibal Corpse, Morbid Angel, Cradle of Filth, The Misfits, Motorhead, Sabbath, big bands, goddammit. Mortician nowadays. 80% of the crowd is just, in my opinion, are not, are not fans, by the definition, fanatical. They're there because A, they're just hanging out with their buds, B, something to do, or C, they're somewhat into fucking metal, but they're not a huge diehard fan of that band. That's just generally what the fuck it is. So, um, yeah, the 20% of the people who really, really want to see Cannibal that night, who's a huge fan, maybe it's their first time seeing them, but they are legitimately a huge fan. If they're 18 years old, they can hold catalog, love them, excited as fuck to meet them, maybe. Um, they would know the goddamn song. And I think that's what they should be catered to anyways, because I don't know, honestly, the other guys, they're just taking up space anyways. It's like, Greg, Greg, okay, cool, you paid, thanks for the, uh, Price of admission, you know, so that we can get paid to be here. So it's they, not like they completely don't matter. But at the same time, who really, really fucking matters is to your actual fucking fans. And they would know it. So I know I would. So yeah, I'd personally play it, play, uh, play it live, goddammit. And that's the set list. Will they? Probably not. Andy Barker. Does J Dog like Skeleton Witch? I like the first record. Um, it wasn't it just kind of like a thrash metal, like 80s style thrash metal. Um uh, I, I don't even know if I've definitely listened to it. We've gotten the shop, but I know I know what it looks like. I'm trying to think about it. I put it on. Could be in the Forgotten More Metal pile. If it either I didn't listen to it. Because it didn't look interesting enough, or I did, and I want to say that I did, and I remember just being like thrashy stuff. Uh, I didn't think it was good enough to buy because I didn't buy it. But I had nothing standing in my mind, my mind that I thought it fucking sucked either. So, probably well, was, you know, listen to it. It was a nice background listen. Eh, it's okay. Put it back on the shelf. That was more than like, that's probably what was the scenario. But I can't say that I know it. Human Brisket, uh, J Tribute Album Battle. J Tribute. Nuclear Death, uh, Bride of Insect versus Blood Impulse to Destroy. For me, it's easily Blood Impulse to Destroy. Uh, I, blood, Impulse to Destroy is definitely my favorite thing by Blood. Um, the rest, Mental Conflict and all that, it's all good, but it's nothing like I'm going to like spin regularly. Impulse to Destroy, I thought it had the best and most memorable songs. Man, I'm, I admit I'm also slightly biased to it because I got that one just accidentally. Uh, I think I front ordered it from Nuclear Blast, the CD version. I got that really young. I was probably like 14 or 15. That was one of my, not, I wasn't going to say one of the first CDs I bought, but it was in the uh, first 100 for sure. First 100 CDs I bought. So it was a very, very early on. So I've known that record for quite some time. And that was the first thing I heard by Blood. And then when I heard the other albums, I'm like, is this the same band? I was like, it sounds nothing fucking alike. Impulse to Destroy, the, the only thing it was kind of the most similar to that I, I, I could picture was a Punch and Stench. Not that I say, I think it sounds like Punch and Stench because I don't, but that was about the only thing I could kind of compare it to. And then when I got the later uh, other releases, I'm like, oh, this is just kind of like, I guess, more brutal grindcore. But uh, I was like, yeah, it's not the same. Uh, I think it's all okay. And then as far as it beating uh, Necro Death, um, that's, what you, that's what you said. Did you say... Uh, Necrodeath? Yeah, that's what you had. Bride of Insect. Necrodeath versus the uh, Blood and Blood. Um, Necrodeath was a band that's, for me, I'm not a huge fan of. I parked them next to the Blasphemy, Voivods. Um, who's another band that you guys know that, that that's that's a classic and and highly influential but does nothing for me? I've always got Voivod, Blasphemy, are probably the Kings, and then there's one or two others. That everybody likes, but I'm just like, just oh, Bond's another one. Bond's a huge number, another one. I think Bond, the vocals are cool as fuck, and I think their image was cool as fuck. However, I've heard through the grapevine, I don't know how true it is. I, maybe it's kind of known knowledge now, 
but at least 20 years ago, it was still kind of obscure as to who the members were and shit. You know, there wasn't all the social media shit. I think the, the code has been cracked now. Put it in there. I've heard that those guys are at least maybe just one of the guys. Total fucking poser canoe. He plays in an alternative band. Don't quote me on that. I think that's what I heard. And I remember always being surprised. But like, really? That badass fucking satanic image? Um, well, uh, that's a little fucking weird. Uh, but I think I have heard that. And it was a little later on, maybe in the early 2000s, when MySpace and shit was starting to happen, when one of the guys was finally, I guess, exposed. Uh, but Vaughn was another classic of classics, like the vocals, like the image. It was definitely super influential. It's definitely the true shit, the real shit, but does nothing for me. Nuclear Death falls in that category. Lori's vocals are cool and they're chaotic as fuck. But when I put it on, I'm like, just the music's not like, you know, it's just not moving me in any way. I'm saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. I mean, it's definitely original. Uh, sounded cool for what it was. Um, I could definitely see how, especially if that was one of your early, early on bands, uh, extreme music. So I heard Nuclear Death probably by the time when I first heard them, I was probably 20 or 21. So that was, I was definitely late to the game. And I was just like, oh, you know, yeah, it's chaotic, cool. But I'm like, there's so much, as far as extreme music, there's stuff that's equally as extreme or more extreme, but yet has better songwriting. That's the catchy, memorable, kind of sing-along, tack foot to type of shit. Um, as opposed to that, it was just kind of like a train wreck to me. But if I would have heard that as probably like at the same time I heard Gorefest Mind Loss, I'd probably be like, dude, that's some of the greatest shit ever. So people that say that, especially if they picked up the demo at the time, and they were young as a teenager, let's say they were 15, I totally get why they would think that. It definitely makes sense, and I can see why they could think that's some of the greatest demos ever. When I'm me here, I'm just like, eh, you know what I mean? So, for me, it was easily blunt. But again, I heard them easily five years before I heard me for death. So, a bit biased. Dave, Dave Meredith, if you like Enthroned, well, I like early Enthroned, uh, Sabathon down, goddammit, it's whatever, Sabathon, Shabathon, all the shit he sings on. So the first, I think he sang on, what, seven albums? I think it's a total of seven albums. I'd have to go back and recount. Without him, I'm just kind of like, eh. It's, I, I've listened to the uh, Obsidian album. There's there's Pentagram Nation. I've listened to one or two of them coming through the shop. I'm like, eh, it doesn't suck. I'm like, it's just, I was like, it's just, to me, it was just another black metal band. I was like, it's, it's, it's lost the goddamn magic for, for, for me personally. Uh, if you like a throne, check out Heinous on New Era Productions. You won't be disappointed. Oh, yeah? Like I said, does it sound like early fucking throne? Because the later stuff, I didn't, again, I didn't, I didn't think it sucked. By no means, I think it sucked. I was just like, yeah, it's just, just not the same man. Ah, my favorite user ID. I, I, thought, I forgot when I was going to, I'm assuming it's on this is the first video posted. I remember when I seen this. As a matter of fact, I think I was in Arizona at the time when this video went up. Then I'm going over and I saw the goddamn user ID and I was laughing my goddamn balls off. I think because I say it on this video. User ID, King Canoe 216. <laughs> that was like fucking bad. He's got like this crazy face, look like he just got him out of jail or some like heathen or some shit. Pretty goddamn fucking funny. I'm back, Horv man. I'm on the street again. We're ready to rumble. I caught the Buckeyes game. <laughs> I caught the Buckeyes game, but we freaking lost the, the Peach Bowl. What's the pe Peach Bowl? Horv man, I freaking busted bail for this. <laughs> Yep, fucking goddamn Buckeyes. Fuck, fucking Buckeyes. That's the, oh, the Ohio State fucking canoes. Saw a chick in the fucking gym today with a goddamn Ohio State fucking uh, hoodie on and uh, started laughing my ass off. Granted, you see it pretty much every day, but it just made me think of this goddamn channel. It's just, and when you stop to think, well, what's, what's wrong with the J Dog? There's nothing wrong with it. It just tells me that you just, very strong likelihood that you just you just don't think for yourself in life. You just whatever fucking was thrown your way and people people you grew up around, whether it been mommy, daddy, aunties, uncles, cousins, or kids in school, what they were into, or what your boyfriend's in it was a chick. Um, you're just kind of following the pack. Like ah, this is what they're into. So yeah, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, watch, I'll watch some Ohio State. That's what I'll wear. There's no doubt in my mind that there's some fat ball fans that are diehards. And like they're die, diehards. They watch it. They played the game in high school. They even maybe maybe made it to a college level themselves. They're loving it. They're betting money on it. That I can respect. But that's but 95% of the people that wear that apparel watch that fucking stupid shit. They're that they're not in that category. It's just they're kind of just they're into it because they can't think for themselves. Like they don't have an interest in themselves. That's why. Generally speaking, people into black metal, death metal, etc. I don't know. There's definitely some fucking weirdos. 
for sure. I'm not saying all, but I'm just saying there's a there's a better likelihood than a guy with an Ohio State fucking jersey. They're just they're going to be more of an interesting person, and the reason being is because they're already there's a very good chance unless they're being a poser around their buds, they're already thinking for themselves because they're liking something that's kind of it's not the norm. You know what I mean? It's not what's uh generally seen as traditional society. So they're already kind of putting themselves as an outcast and making their life in a sense slightly harder because you know you got to answer stupid questions and just you get the looks etc cetera, etc cetera. so again unless they're just being a complete fucking poser they they have a more likelihood that they're just an interesting human being overall than somebody just got in the fucking fat ball because now since elementary school that's what everybody i was around liked and again there's like i said there's nothing wrong with it it just tells me you're probably a brain dead fucking sheep that doesn't think for yourself 99 times out of 100. There's always that one, that one out of 100 exception to the rule. So if there's 10,000 people in the rule, what is that, 100 people that are probably diehards and they think for themselves and they're truly passionate about it? Okay, fair enough. I'm not saying they don't exist. I'm just saying they're damn sure not the fucking norm. So when I see it, it's a 99% chance I'm looking at them, I'm like, brain dead sheep canoe that can't think for himself. Cops, what's the you know what the fuck to do? Put the cops box, get ass right in the morning. Later, goddammit.